Hey everyone, this is Mary from SVG Cuts, and I can't believe how quickly this year is going by and it's already time to get excited about fall projects. So I'm going to take a guess and say that you probably like fall as much as I do because it's just so much fun. You know, the holidays are coming, the temperature is awesome, it's not too hot, it's not too cold. At least if you live in, you know, the northern hemisphere at this time of the year, and especially in the Midwest like we are here in Chicago right now. So we've got Thanksgiving on the horizon, and we've got Halloween, which is a completely separate animal. But it's a lot of fun to work with all these different fun fall colors. I just love like the burnt oranges and the chocolate browns and the, the sage greens. And I feel like no matter what you make with those kind of colors and the fall elements, it looks so exciting and so fun. So first of all, we have our really cute little scarecrow. And I've been thinking about how to make a cool scarecrow decoration for some time now so I said hey now's the time and I'm really happy with how it came out I think it looks super cute and would make a really cute centerpiece or you know decor for any kind of little fall display that you have or if you want to make it as a gift for someone you can and the fun thing is that you can customize it with you know all kinds of different papers and I think as long as you use fall colors and fall papers it's gonna look really cute so that is really fun and it's not too hard to put together. I'm going to show you how that works here in just a minute. Then we also have a ribbon board, which, I mean, it doesn't really use ribbon, but it's like a ribbon board. And I feel like um, whenever I see a ribbon board in the store, like at Hobby Lobby or wherever, if I'm shopping, I just always get excited. They just look so cute and you can just stick a bunch of stuff in there and it looks really fun, especially photos or memorabilia or what have you. So this one obviously is folly because of the colors and the papers and the elements, but you could totally make it for anything else. Like if you used baby elements and used like baby pastels and a baby picture, it would be a really special gift for someone at a baby shower or, you know, use your imagination. Really anything you can think of, you could adapt it into. And there's a little panel on the back to finish it off and there's a little hole up here so you could hang it on a on a bulletin board or on a wall if you wanted or stand it up on a shelf or a table or something. So I think that is really fun and you can really get crazy with it. So we also have a fun bag here which it really uses your cutting machine to do all the work for you and make it look really impressive and intricate even though it's um, not that many pieces and it goes together really quickly. So this gold color back here is actually vellum. So, you know, you could fill it up with a special little gift, like a scarf or something. Or you could also put like an electronic tea light candle on the inside to light it up if you use the vellum like I've done here. So instead of vellum, I think you could also use some clear acetate paper that you can get at the office supply store. That way you can see through it and you can see your little treats that you put inside. So we also have two coordinating cards, which just use some more fun fall elements. This one's nice and simple, but it uses a lot of dimensions so you can see all the different cuts that your machine does, which is a lot of fun because, you know, if you would go to the store and look for a card like this, you know, you could stamp happy birthday on there too to make it a birthday card. But if you go card shopping, you really don't see any kind of cards like that. So if you make it for someone, they're going to be like, wow, that's really cool. And if you did see a card like this in the store, I think it would be at least like eight, nine dollars for those like those specialty cards that you see that are really cool. So we also have another cute little card that's just shaped like a barn. And again, depending on what kind of stamp you use up there, you can make it for a different occasion, you know, like a thank you card or whatever. So one more thing that's cool is that you can totally mix and match all these different elements to make whatever kind of project you want. Like you've got an apple, a barn, leaves, a pumpkin, all kinds of stuff. So you can really get creative, maybe just make a really simple gift bag and put a pumpkin on the front, you know. So I've got all my pieces cut out to show you how these three-dimensional items go together. And this time I used really fun paper. It's by Doodlebug Design. And I just love it because it's really colorful, which is perfect for fall. And it's very, very cute. So I was trying to go for some really cute looking projects and I think it worked. So I've got all my pieces cut out to show you how these go together. So let's get started. So first things first, let's take a look at our falling leaves bag. And the first thing you want to do is take your vellum or your paper or your clear plastic, whatever you're going to use, and put it on the back first. Then you can go ahead and flip it over and glue your leaves in place on the front. 
Then to finish it off, it's super simple. I probably don't even need to show you how this works because it's pretty obvious, but just in case you are wondering here, we're just gonna put some glue on this long side tab. And my glue's getting a little crazy over here, but. So what we wanna do is just place the one part of the bag right onto the other part of the bag. And then I can do the same thing on the other side and glue that into place. And then all that's left to do is flip it over and we can go ahead and put glue on all three of these tabs here and then just put the bottom into place like this. Then you can go ahead and flip your top over and lash it up and if you want to use some ribbon or twine or whatever you can. Next for our ribbon board I've got the two main pieces, the front here, which has got nine little circles cut out of it. And it doesn't matter which way you turn it, it's the same. And we've got the back here, which just has one big dot in the back. And then we've got our four identical sides here. So first, let's actually take our front panel, which also has some circles cut out of the front of it. And we want to go ahead and glue that to the front of our board. And before you glue it down, if you want to, you can rub a ink pad around the edges of this piece, which is just something that I like to do to pretty much all of my projects. I think it just adds a really nice touch to rub an ink pad around the edges of shapes. So you can go real heavy on the ink if you want to make it look kind of more distressed and grungy, or you can go more light if you want it to just look classy but finished off. So now we can go ahead and glue this strip into place right on the front. And it can go this way or if you want it, it could go that way. But since my paper has a design with these acorns, I want it to go this way for sure. So let's set this aside and take a look at our four identical sides. So what we want to do is put glue on the side tab of any of them and just link them all together that way until they're all forming a square shape. So you want to do your best to make sure it's all lined up as perfectly as possible. That way your, your finished project will be nice and straight. And we'll just do the fourth corner here to form our sides. Now as you can see, we're just about ready to glue our front on. And as you can see on this front on the front of this, there are, my glue didn't want to hold well enough there. You can see that there's circles cut out on the front here, which means that this is the front of our project. Because if you flip it over, you can see that this side does not have the circles. So this is the front with the circles, and we're just going to glue this right onto the front here. So to do that, I'm going to go ahead and put a nice thin even layer of glue all the way around my whole front of my project here. And you want to make sure that your glue goes all the way out to the corners of your tabs so that the front of your project gets a nice even hold. We don't want those corners to start coming off. So next we can just start to place this. I'm going to start with just one tab here and line that up as perfectly as I possibly can. And I'm going to go over to the opposite corner 
and line that up. And then everything is just falling right into place here for me to glue everything else together. So you can just go ahead and glue down the rest of your tabs. We just want to line that up really nicely. And then once it's starting to take hold in the right spot, we can flip it over and press down from the inside. Okay, so now we can go ahead and take a look at our ribbons, our paper, paper ribbons. So the, there's two that are the longest. Those are going to go like this. And then the other four pieces are very similar to each other. And you can just, you can tell exactly where they go. Two of these short ones are identical and the other two are identical. So I like to just lay it on my project so I can see where everything's supposed to go. And then you can go ahead and take your brads and just start putting your brads through the strips if you want. But I think it looks really nice if you do a basket weave pattern so that it looks like a nice woven pattern. So you get the idea. You can figure that out yourself if you want to make sure that it's going like this one's going over and then the next one's going under and then over and so on so that it's all in a basket weave pattern. Then you can go ahead and grab your nine brads and I think it looks nice if you choose a brad that's really similar to the color of your strips and then you just finish those off by opening them up in the back and then glue your back into place the same way that we glued the front into place. And then if you want to put your back panel on, that finishes it off and hides the other side of these little ribbons, which you glue down. So, for example, it gets glued around like this. Then you can go ahead and decorate the front however you want with whatever elements. You can do the same ones I did, or you can do something totally different. Now for our scarecrow. I am going to start with the hat because, I don't know, sounds good. The hat's, uh, we can work our way from the top to the bottom, but it doesn't really matter where you start. So as you can see, the whole hat is just one piece. And to put it together, I'm going to put glue on all the tabs in a row here. And I'm just going to work my way down the side doing my best to line it up nice and evenly. And I'm giving each tab a few seconds to dry before I move on to the next one. So go ahead and do that all the way around the hat. So I'm about to glue my final piece of my hat together. And I went ahead and put glue on this tab here, this row of tabs. And then I also put it on the next one too, so that I can tuck that under and then glue the, the other row of tabs down. And that just makes it easier on me when I finish up my hat here. It's already in place, ready to be finished off. So there is our hat. And now all we need to do is put glue all the way around on these tabs here and just fold those all over. And you might need to hold each one for a few seconds while they dry. And that just kind of adds some strength to our hat, makes it nice and straight and finished off. So at this point, if you want to go ahead and put your little hat band on, you can. And then we'll set that aside and take a look at the head of our scarecrow. So that is all just one piece. And then we've got six of these panels, which we'll put on at the end. So I think the scarecrow looks nice with like a, a straw colored head, but I felt like getting a little creative here and I made it orange to look like a pumpkin. So again, this 
is going to work just like the hat did with the same, same idea, same principles of gluing one row of tabs at a time and again just giving each one a little bit of a chance to dry before you move on to the next one and then repeating that all the way around the head. So just like the hat, when I get to my final piece here, I'm going to put glue on this one, tuck it inside, and then concentrate on this row of tabs before I finish off the whole thing here. And there is our scarecrow head. Now to make it look nice and smooth, we want to take our six tabs that look like this and we're going to glue them like this. But we don't want to glue the whole entire thing. I think it's best if you just put glue on the top and on the bottom. That way it creates a nice curve and it's just perfect. So you can do that all the way around the head and then you can add your facial features. But first actually let's put the hat on first before you put the face on. Just in case you would like to see it with the hat on first. I think that would be a better idea. So to put our hat on our scarecrow, I'm going to put a line of glue around like this and also a little bit on the inside. And no one's going to see this glue. It's okay if it's a little bit out of control. And if you want to take a look at your hat and see which side looks best, like mm, this side looks a little better than that side, so I'm going to say that that's the front if it matters at all. It doesn't matter. You can also put it straight on or it's kind of cute if it's cocked to the side a little bit. So now at this point if you want to put your facial features on, that's good. And then we can take a look at the hair of our scarecrow. So our hair is three identical pieces here and then the two side pieces. So if you have a pen or pencil or a stylus or something that you can use or your, your fingernails like I'm doing here to kind of give each little piece of hair a little bit of a curve, I think that looks nice. So I'm going to take this one here and just put it right up right up underneath here so it's it's hidden by the hat and let's say that let's say that this is the face of my scarecrow I want to put this little piece here like this so let's go ahead and glue that into place and why don't I just grab my my finished one here so you can see we've got the little short pieces on either side of his face and then the other pieces going around his head. So next I've got my vest here which is just all one piece and I'm going to put this together and then just set it to the side. And for my vest right now I picked a really plain color because the paper, the paper that I'm using for my shirt is pretty crazy so I thought I don't want my scarecrow to have too many crazy colors going on. So as you can see, I just put some glue on these two tabs and I just popped that right into place. And our vest is done. We can set that aside and take a look at the shirt. So now for the body of our shirt, I've got my 10 pieces lined up here as well as the top of the shirt and the bottom. So your machine will have cut these numbers into each piece so that you can lay them out in order. And I went ahead and I took a marker and I darkened them in so that you can see them in this video. But you don't have to do the marker part unless you really want to. So I'm just going to grab any piece here. Might as well start with number one. And I'm going to put glue on the two side tabs. And I'm just going to line it up with piece number two. And like I did before, I want to make sure that this tab has a good enough hold before I move on to its neighbor tab. So we can go ahead and do the same thing all the way down with all 10 pieces. 
So go ahead and just start gluing your pieces together in order. So here are all 10 of my pieces glued together and I went ahead and put glue on all of them on the top. And as you can see, piece number one here is actually right in the front and center. In case you were wondering, that is where it is. So now I'm gonna take my top here. As you can see, the top is smaller than the bottom and that's just gonna get glued right onto the top of our Scarecrow's shirt. So to get that positioned properly, I'm gonna get these two, two side pieces glued down first and then I'm just gonna coax everything else into place. And I got it lined up just perfectly, which is pretty awesome. But you know, if yours is, is slightly off, it's actually okay because your vest is gonna cover up the top, really. So you can just stick your vest right into place. You don't even need to glue it because it just fits perfectly. And then we can take a look at the bottom here and glue the rest of those into place. So again, I'm just putting glue on all these tabs all the way out to the corners so that the bottom gets a nice good hold. And I'm just going to stick it right onto the bottom and I'm just gonna work with it a little bit and push it around until it's properly lined up. Okay. So now we can take a look at our arm. So your shirt also includes four pieces for each, each arm. And you can tell that they go in this order because they're numbered one through four. And the other arm is also numbered one through four, but the other arm also has a tiny circle on the top of each number. So I can tell that these pieces all go together and we can go ahead and put glue on the side of one of them. Same idea as the shirt that we just did. So we'll put this into place and you can go ahead and put your arm together by going one through four all the way around. So here is my arm. I'm gonna set that down and take a look at these two pieces that go inside the, the cuff. And as you can see, this one has longer pieces of straw. This one is a little bit shorter. And I just wanna cover the four sides of this and just stick it right in. I think it can really go either way. It doesn't really matter which direction you, you stick it in there. And then we'll do the same thing with the other one, which will stick out just a little bit more. like so. So there's our cute little arm. And if you wanna ruffle those up a little bit, it's kinda of cute. So now we can take our arm here and put glue on all of these tabs and grab our shirt. And you can put it like this. If you want it to be more up, you could put it like that. I think either way is totally cute. So you just wanna do your best to center it right there in that hole and just hold it for maybe 20 seconds or so while it dries. And then we can take our, our other arm and put that into place also. And then we can go ahead and glue our head into place. So I'm gonna load this up with kind of like the maximum amount of glue that I can without getting too crazy. And I wanna make sure that these are not going inward. And then I just wanna center that right on the top. And maybe also hold that for a little while as that dries. And then we can set that aside. So next for the legs of our scarecrow, obviously there are two. 
and I've got mine laid out here. This is just one leg, and it's numbered again, one, two, three, four. And you can tell that the other leg is the other leg by looking at the one, two, three, four, and they all have a little circle next to them. So these don't have circles, that means they all go together. And then I've also got my little decorative pieces here, which we'll do at the end. So super simple, I'm just gonna grab piece number one here. Does not really matter which one you start with, as long as they go in order. And if you made it this far, you probably can figure out exactly how this works. So again, I'm just gluing a row of tabs into place, one at a time, and I'm giving each tab a moment to dry before I move on. So this time it forms a little bit more of a different shape than the other things like this we've done today so far. But it's the same principle and we just want to work our way all the way around. And as always, I'm just doing my very best to line everything up as perfectly as possible because that's always a good thing. So I'm almost all the way done here with one of my legs. And this paper that I'm using is great. I love this paper so much, the AC cardstock paper because it cuts so well and it always just looks fabulous no matter what I do with it. But I was gonna say it would be kind of cool to maybe use a pattern. Like you can see on this scarecrow, I have a brown pattern and I think that looks really nice. So let's just finish off our, our one leg here. And get these tabs into place. And I don't wanna to rush too much because I wanna make sure that this has a good hold so it doesn't slide out of place after I move on here. And as you could probably guess, we need to just put glue on all five of these tabs and fold this over, which I will do. And we want our glue, as always, to go all the way out to the corners of the tabs. And fold that into place. You might need to hold this for 10 or 15 seconds while it dries. So before you finish off the top of your leg, it's a good idea if you wanna put some something in there to weight it down, like some little pebbles I think are perfect. Beans could be nice, but maybe something that has no chance of decomposing, like pebbles or little plastic, heavier plastic beads. That's just optional if you wanna do that to make it a little more bottom heavy. And again, the same principle here on the top. And this part is just gonna make sure that our leg is nice and even so that when we glue it onto the bottom of the shirt, it's nice and even. So this is this leg here on this side, not that it matters, but you're gonna have two. And now what we wanna do is take our straw piece here. And before you glue it down, it's nice if you can kinda eyeball it and make sure that you know where it's going. If you wanna move it up or move it down, you can. And then when you've got an idea of where it's going. We can just put a thin line of glue across the top and we'll just put that into place. And then as you could probably guess, the cuff is just gonna cover this up and finish it off. Whoops. And I'm sure you'll be much more careful with your yours and not get glue everywhere like I just did. So now we can take our little cuff and just glue that right on top to finish it off and to cover it up. 
And then all that's left to do once we've got both of our legs done is to load this up with a nice amount of glue. So we've got plenty of glue on our leg and now it's kind of up to you how you want to position it. You can angle it outwards a little bit. It looks kind of cute. Or you can make it straight up and down. You can make it more out to the side or more towards the center. It's totally up to you. Just put both of your legs on however you like. As you can see with this one, I kind of angled them out a little bit, which I think is really cute. So there you have it, super fun fall projects. I hope you're as excited as I am, and I can't wait to make even more projects for fall and for Thanksgiving and Halloween, and Christmas is on the way too, so it's time for some serious paper crafting fun. So thanks for watching. If you make any of these projects, you'll have to share a picture of your project on our Facebook wall or in our forum or on your blog or pin it to Pinterest or put it on Instagram because we always love to see your projects. So thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time and happy crafting.